Household was one of my most, it was my most anticipated RPG of, of 2023. And it was definitely one of my favorite releases of last year. And uh, I love the team behind uh, this this product line. Um, and I talked to Simone and Enrico very, very frequently, uh, if not weekly, at least, you know, every few, every few weeks we drop each other uh, an email or a message. And, and so uh, a while back, they said, I think Rico actually was the one that, that said, hey, we're thinking about doing a uh, household for, uh, but with 5e. And I said, that sounds great. I think that you put a lot of passion and a lot of work into the setting, and it would be great to see a whole new audience uh, appreciate it. Um, and uh, then Rico also said something along the lines of, well, do you know anybody that we should talk to about 5e? And I said, well, if it were my product line, the number one name that I would have do a 5e edition of this game is a gentleman that I just love everything that he puts out uh, for 5e. I'm not a huge 5e player, but his stuff I always take a look at. And that, of course, is Jacob Rogers, who did, did uh, you know, Lord of the Rings role playing, he did Ruins of Simbarum. Uh Pretty much, he's done a whole bunch of other, other titles, but mostly those were the last few ones that he's done recently. And that Jacob's just a, a phenomenal designer, phenomenal person. And uh, I would love to see if we can make this collaboration work for y'all. And I think it did. I think it did. And uh, right now they have a Kickstarter going on. This team has a Kickstarter going on uh, on Kicks, uh, right now for Adventures in the Household. This is a 5D edition of Household. You can back it, back it. And if you've got uh, players that just love to play 5e in those mechanics and don't want to learn a new system that was specifically built for household then this is definitely uh the uh the the system that you'll or the product line that you'll want to jump into uh then that way they already know kind of the the, the uh, 5e mechanics and uh kind of know where to jump on there's a few other things that uh, that jacob has added as well but yeah and you can also pick up the previous edition, the original system, if you did not hit that Kickstarter the, the previous time. Uh, and then they also have some uh, a way to pick up the, the minis that are highly, highly uh, coveted right now uh, on the secondary market. So and that this way you can kind of pick up the stuff that maybe you missed out on on the first Kickstarter. But yeah, today we're going to chat with the design team and Two Little Mice uh, for Adventures in the Household. Stick around. Oh, I can't wait to have them on yet again. Hey everyone, welcome to Victory Industry Gaming. My name is Doug. Today we're talking adventures in the household with Rico and Simone from Two Little Mice and Jacob Rogers, the gentleman that uh, does all the amazing 5D adaptations of games and systems that are out there. Um, before we begin, uh, if you are a fan of any of this, uh, these product lines, household, the two little mice, please hit that like button down below. Uh, I love having them on. And if you'd like to uh, connect with uh, other designers and publishers, feel free to hit that like button or the, uh, the subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscriber so we can feature all sorts of tabletop games uh, and, uh, and projects that uh, hit crowdfunding or just get released because there's just so many awesome designers like these folks that I'm going to have on in just a moment. The other thing I'll let you know is that if you would like to try Adventures in the Household, uh, there is a quick start uh, on the Kickstarter page that you can download. It's actually like, I think it's like 100 pages or maybe maybe some other, and, and Rico can correct me on that, but it's a big Kickstart, a quick start. It's huge. It should be like a finished product all by itself, but they're giving it away for free. So go down, download it, and you can see all the awesome work that Jacob has put into this 5 year adaptation of Household. And uh, yeah, you can try it out and then back it on Kickstarter. All right, that's enough of that. Let's bring on the team that you're all here to see. That is, of course, Rico, Simone, and Jacob. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me this afternoon. Or actually, it's evening where, where, where you are yes. in Italy. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Staying up uh, late. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jacob. Oh. Uh, this is, I think, your your. Uh, is this your debut on on my channel? I think it might be. It might be. Wow, very cool. Well, congratulations to the three of you on the success of the uh, crowdfunding campaign so far. 
Uh, you're about halfway through your uh, campaign. Uh, you're in, uh, it's got over 1100 backers and, um, I think people are really, really excited to, to see this new edition of household, uh, for 5e players. Thank you. I'm very, very happy with, uh, how the, the audience is responding, especially since it's completely new audience first 5e project for us. So it was you know, a, f a first for us. Yeah, sure. Do you want to talk a little bit about why you wanted to go in this direction with 5e? And because and, uh, the, the original Kickstarter did really, really well, um, I, I feel. And uh, I love the mechanics. I love, I love the, the D6 uh, system that you have for that. But uh, can you can you give a little bit of uh, can you talk a little bit about the reason why you uh, wanted to put out a 5e edition of, uh, of Hassel? Well, um, I think compared to our other games, Household uh, relies mostly on its, uh, you know, on its setting and world building, uh, and um, we just love Household for its character and all the story that you can play in. And uh, the main idea uh, for us was to try and, you know, widen the audience for Household. Uh, and also, since we are preparing for House of Volume 2, since we are going to go outside to visit the garden of the house, it seems for us as the, you know, the perfect time right now while we are waiting to end our works on, on House of Volume 2 um, to, um, you know, to, to kind of find a new audience for Volume 1 so that once we get at volume two, they are, there are no people, you know, left behind. So it was the perfect spot for us. Um, yeah, and also it was, as I was saying, it's a first, uh, uh, we worked with 5e in the past. As you know, we worked with uh, Acheron games and with Acheron we did uh, Inferno and now Apocalypse, which is coming up this, these days. And um, both Inferno and Apocalypse, we only did, you know, the, the concept, the, the main, you know, world building and the character. And of course, Daniela did most of the arts and we did the art direction, creative direction, but we didn't actually do the old product. So it was also a way for us to find, to, to try something new. Very cool. Um, yeah, Jacob, you, you came on, uh, when, when did you start collaborating with Rico? I can't remember, I, I think I sent, the email to introduce you guys yeah. a little while ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a little while. It's been a little bit of a road getting here. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Doug was the one who put all this together. Um, yes. But yeah, no, Doug, you sent me an email. Said, "Hey, we got. I got these guys. They want to talk to you about this project. You know, check it out." I was like, "Okay, right, two little mice. Awesome." <laughs> um, so yeah, and then we we worked in. I iterated on the rules, did some experimentation, and then got everything together and got the quick start, quick start together and made sure we had everything more or less ready to go uh, before we started on the promotion for the Kickstarter. Very cool. Very cool. How long did, uh, did it take you to kind of, uh, you, once, you get, uh, once you looked at the, the existing rule set, how, how long did it take you to kind of uh, figure out how you wanted to do uh, this the setting with, uh, with 5e? I think there's probably about three months there of, you know, let's play around with these ideas. Let's play test these things. Let's talk to people and say, okay, you know, what if we do this? Okay, that's not very 5e-ish, but it's very household-ish. <laughs> so let's try. Okay, well, let's try to do this, you know, more of a 5e idea. Well, that doesn't really fit in the house. And then just kind of find, like, okay, you know, like hereditary contracts. All the different folk have abilities that they you know, get there's the only magic in the house is the the magic of the house and the magic of the contracts um and we experiment a little bit with ideas where we might expand that a little bit uh, but eventually it's like okay that really doesn't work for the setting um so again about three or four months of nearing things down and then you know a further bit of time making sure we got all the rules written all the professions taken care of all the vocations all the creatures and everything so wow. That doesn't seem that doesn't seem very long at all for in my opinion it seems like it seems like you just but i mean at this point jacob i think you're just a 5e machine i think you just like <laughs> well just again like the, it, top you know, three you months just, of experimentation you know, then you know a few more months of writing 
So short, 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 you know. Very but, cool. Yeah. So uh, six. Um, the Rico Simone, like six to eight, nine months or so of various things, I think maybe. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. It's uh, six, six, seven months total work. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely, it happened after Gen Con, so yeah. you know, yes. it can't have been. Yeah, we started working late August, uh, September, yeah. and yes, the of course the the first things that anybody could notice looking at the household is the household. It's huge. There's a lot of things in it. A lot of different things. A very deep lore. A lot of pages, of course, also, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of mechanics. Um, a lot of focus. Lots of stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. A lot of stuff. <laughs> and lots of focus for us was very important on character and character growth and the way to you can uh, you know customize your characters to become a, a, a unique littling inside the house because the game is about telling the story of your characters of your group of characters uh inside the story of the house so uh yes it was a, a very full <laughs> full um three four four months of experimentation and how jack was saying to find the right balance to um meet <laughs> to have household and dungeon and dragons 5e meet in the right spot for every uh, step, every major mechanics that we have and we wish to um, translate into a different uh, system and so on. But yes, very interesting way of doing things. We are, we are loving it, by the way, what, what is emerging from the works and how now that it's taking forms. It's very, very, very Beautiful. We we love household. I mean, we are we are in love with household. Me and Rico. It's a big hunk of our life. Household. <laughs> it's been dictated by household in various forms. Uh, we are we started working. I don't know if everyone listen. No, we started working on the first edition of the first game, which was very different from the one um, Jacob has shown back in 2018. I think we started working on it. Uh, so there's been many many years of works that that uh is bringing us forward uh into this this little adventure <laughs> it it's a it's a little tiny setting but it's it's a big it's a large product line like it's it's those books are, are heavy like there but there's so much more and you can just tell when you're reading it there's so much love and passion in that uh, in that setting and in this game that uh, i'm so excited for you that uh, you'll have more players playing in this in this world because it definitely deserves a lot more notice um now speaking of of the the products that are the existing products that are out for household now this adventures in the household doesn't add anything that that previous uh players or pre, pre, you know owners of the original household it's just it's just pretty much just conversion products products like you're just going from one product to another product and, and there's there's nothing that that uh, existing uh players are going to be missing out on uh that, that's not uh you know that, that's included in this in this kickstarter correct it's one of the maybe the biggest challenge of this kickstarter campaign and of this product is that of course when you uh, are launching a, a kickstarter campaign uh, um, you you want to have as much you know new product as much buzz as possible so that people get involved in the uh and what you're doing there's something new coming out every day but right now our main goal was kind of uh making the new household players in par you know with the uh existing household players so what we wanted to do was uh, um try to put everyone at the same point in the history of household because one of the main aspects of household is that we are um the household uh, you know world uh, is not only a geographical place, but it's an historical place, actually. You, know, you are playing in a certain era. So as I always say, to, to make a comparison, it's not like when you play Yowzold, you are playing Lord of the Rings. You are playing while Frodo was trying to bring the, the ring to Mordor, you know. So uh, any generation of Yowzold which will move, um, you know, a little bit forward in history. Um, so it was really important for us to simply try and not add any new stuff, but just try and convert all the three books 
that we already have, which are basically the core book, um, a campaign book that in the 5e edition is called Such Small Matters, and uh, the household guide uh, or a practical guide to living inside the house, depending on the edition, which is basically this expansion, you know, of the lore with new option for your characters, etc. And of course, a lot of figures and miniatures uh, that are coming from our experience with uh, with Simon. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I know a lot of people are really excited about. We're able to get the, those uh, those figures that uh, they, they either they missed out on in the previous campaign, and now they're they're able to pick them up, pick them up. So. Uh, it, if if anybody is looking to pick those up, there's a pledge level for that, and and you know, I think you also get the five E and PDF, uh, the, yes. the Adventures in the Household and the PDF as, as well when you pledge that, which is uh, a really nice uh, added value as well. Jacob, was there anything in these in this uh, in the original book in the original game that you had a hard time? I know you said the 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 um what, they call, what, what did we call it the the household the contracts. Yeah, the contracts. Sorry, I couldn't think of contract for a second. Um, I know that the contracts was was something that you said was was a little bit difficult. Was was there anything else that, that you had a hard time? Was like, is there something that, that that you seemed seemed to kind of take a little bit longer to to convert over to five E than than uh, anything else? Well, I think that actually the elegance of the original household system was almost a little bit of a tripping point for us oh, okay. because. The first version of the rules that um, I handed off to Rico and Simone for, you know, feedback and testing uh, had a, a very household style approach of like, you actually have skills that you're going to roll for combat. Um, and of course, because I had wrote it and my playstations have been there, they're like, okay, yeah, I understand. Um, but then when, you know, we had some beta readers look at it, they're like, oh, no, I mean, this is... I'm rolling a skill to attack. I, I don't understand, um, you know. Um, so, you know, while it was an interesting approach to take, I think ultimately we had to say, okay, no, we need to make sure that 5e players are going to understand the system almost instinctively. Let's go and make it more standard. Uh, let's have regular weapon proficiencies, armor proficiencies, et cetera. Um, so, um, you know, again, there were, there were challenges, of course, but... Um, I don't think there was anything. I think that was probably our most major, like, okay, we've got to take a step back kind of moment. Interesting. Interesting. And I, I, um, yeah, I can say that weirdly enough, one would imagine, and I, for one, would uh, did imagine it, uh, is that, uh, you know, we being the designer of the original household and Jacob being, uh, you know, a veteran designer in. 5e and Dungeons and Dragon, uh, you know, it's it, it, that it would be kind of, uh, you know, um, a struggle between us or a fight between us because we want to keep the original rules and Jacob want to keep the 5e rules or do something new. But it's actually, it was, uh, well, it was not the other way around, but it was Jacob was extremely welcoming of the new uh, rules uh, and it was, it was, extremely fast in reading through everything, understanding, you know, what's kind of the, the engine, how, how, how it was supposed, you know, to, to work uh, and try and translate everything into this uh, uh, 5e concept that's uh, Adventures in the Household. So it, it was actually, uh, I think it was pretty easy. It, it did took, take a lot of time and a lot of, you know, of course, trial and error, a lot of months of, of work. But it was an extremely easy process due to the fact that Jacob uh, uh, was really he did understand, you know, the the original concept of household and was kind of trying to um, to translate the experience rather than adapting the rules. If that makes sense. I love that. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I think J Jacob does really, really well. Uh, I'm going to talk to him about him, even though he's like right here on, on screen. But uh, that's one of the reasons why I love uh, anything that uh, Jacob does because uh, it's just phenomenal. You, you're, you're, you're just a, you know how to use that that rule set really well and and make a product feel like the setting it's supposed to be in. Yeah, I mean that's always the goal. Is you know five E. I think some people get confused like 
the 5e rules the 5e system is like roll a d20 add some modifiers compare it to a target number you know it doesn't there's nothing in that system that says you have to be playing and fighting red dragons and sure. doing and casting spells um you know as long as you can you know find ways to you know have modifiers from coming from somewhere and abilities coming from somewhere you can make it work and i think like especially like i'm really happy with the skill list we finally worked down it took a little bit of winnowing pairing and like you know maybe we can use this one from standard 5e maybe we really need this one from household but the final skill loss this i think is really good at like these are things that fit in the house but also things that are going to be familiar to 5e players yeah that, that's probably um, one that took longer was actually the yeah the uh, very first the very first obstacle we had to overcome is to uh, decide together a list of skill that was a uh, jeff had said right for the game so that you have everything you need in order to play house of that we know house of this uh regency like era with firearms with no magic apart from the, the very specific uh contracts uh powers and but at, at the same time we didn't want to um take things too far uh because we we, we thought that uh, also the basic you know, structure of the uh, uh, had several interesting things that we can use in household as well. So it was very a game of uh, finding the right balance again, both in the number of skill, uh, where was um, under which ability, and the name of each skill. Uh, as Jacob <laughs> probably now knows, we are very very interested in find the right words finding the right names for skills and talents and such, uh, because we, we, we think that uh, when you are looking at your character sheet, when you are reading through the uh, the skill list, you are already playing. It, 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 somehow the words that we use communicate uh, to the player what uh, is the game, what where, where the game will be, will bring him during this session. That's also how, how we basically design our game. We start from the character sheet. That's the very first thing that we do. So I would open Photoshop and have me and Simone, we are looking at the sheet and we are trying to build, you know, uh, even the layout of the character sheet. And that's basically what we did with Jacob as well. So Jacob has kind of a similar, I believe, Jacob, correct me, from yes. kind, of, kind of a similar approach. Yeah. So it, like, you want to look at what you're doing on a character sheet that will give you an idea of yeah. of the, the framework. So that's um... yeah, yeah. And plus, also, I had my play tester, so they needed the character sheets to play from. <laughs> so I had to make something, and then I showed it to Rico. And he's like, "No, no, no, that's not right at all." <laughs> <laughs> Bad timing. No, no. <laughs> But yeah, no, again, it was just a process of refinement. Yes, for, for us, it's really, I, I cannot stress enough how the character sheet is important for us because as a player, is the single piece of paper you are looking at most of the time while playing. Right. So your eyes are constantly on it. And if in the character sheet, there's the, the soul of the game, so everything runs smoothly uh, at the table, I mean. Okay. But the, the, the very first argument argument we had with Jacob was the first idea of a character sheet was vertical. Uh, like it's like versus, oh, yeah. versus landscape, Doug, hours of time. Hours of time. <laughs> really? Not really. Really? But, but, yeah. <laughs> but we're like, no, this is going to be on its own time, I'm afraid. <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> we go at, 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 at heart, a minor heart attack when so <laughs> because we are we I guess I grew up with a, a small table and having vertical sheets was always a problem because we are you know always yeah you know fighting for space so having a, a landscape sheet is always you know uh, <laughs> it was easy oh man uh, let's get to some of the questions that are in the chat uh, while we have a second. Uh, 
Tartison says, uh, any suggestions for running homemade characters through the Fragile Peace story? Was that done in any playtesting? Mm. Yeah, that, that was uh, done in almost any, uh, in almost every playtesting, because actually we have built this 24 character to be extremely customizable, so you can... Uh, okay, uh-huh. no... Yeah, the way we think, we start from the character and, and then build. So even the way we want to convey, you know, the lore and the world building of household is through the character. So basically, I think the best thing for anyone to do if they want to understand household is reading through the pre-made character and see their, their stories, their interaction between one another. The most important thing that I would suggest in running the Saga of the Fragile Peace with custom character is, of course, if you're using the book, A Saga of the Fragile Peace or Such Small Matters, is to focus not uh, on the uh, professions of this character, like this is a group with a scholar and a duelist, so I will need a scholar and a duelist, not on the starting point, because that's just a hook. They are going there to do something. You can invent, you know, your own or just take. But it's the relation between the characters that really... Uh, matters. So if I take any kind of, I will do this experiment and then I will regret it. <laughs> you know, uh, for example, the great climb that we have here. Yeah. This is a, a story basically about there's been an accident. Uh, there is a diplomat who has to go upstairs. Uh, they cannot take the, um, um, the, the I don't know, the coach that runs on the yes. of the of the stairs. So basically, this diplomat and uh, his um, secretary Amazing. are going to have to climb uh, the great stairs, which is basically a huge uh, mountain. And so they are going to rely on. In this case, there's Lita and two boss. So basically, there are two a hunter and a bodyguard. They will that will have to escort them. So now the kind of relationship that we have in this party. We have basically two littlings that are accustomed to being in the wild. One is Lita. Uh, she's a hunter. Of course, she knows the place. One is two. Two boys is strong, is big. So uh, even if it's not prepared, uh, he will manage, you know. And on the other side, we have a criminal and a scholar. One is uh, two extremely posh and elegant character. Yes. Uh, one it's you know street savvy the other is just you know a, a scholar and uh, doesn't know anything about you know the wild it's an etiquette teacher i mean it's not so my, my suggestion will always try and understand what's the relationship between the character and make character that have similar uh relationship because that's going to be important in the story so someone has to climb the the stair and is not capable of facing the wild and someone is extremely, you know, um, used to it. So the story that we are going to tell is someone with uh, four luggages uh, and a suitcase that's trying to bring them up, you know, upstairs and then they'll have to, and it's kind of a classic, you know, in the adventure genre, this you know, this scholar with a lot of luggages that has to, to go somewhere wild. But basically any of these, that my, my main, um, you know, my main suggestion would be try and reproduce the inner, you know, interaction between characters. Sure. Uh, that's actually kind of falls into Katarina says, did you have to change anything in 5e to bring more focus on interaction in the, in the, the uh, household originals? Um, well, I mean, again, we developed the idea of scenes. You know, there are combat scenes and downtime scenes and social scenes, and there are specific rules for social scenes. Uh, and then we also did another thing of separating the care skill and the medicine skill. You can okay. be good at caring for someone without any, you know, um, scholarly knowledge of medicine. You can just be a good person taking care of others. Um, so those were two big things of like, we want to make sure that there are interactions. Um, like we said earlier, that's the kind of a Regency sort of setting. We need to have passionate character interactions. That's a feature of Regency stories, right? Um, so we've tried to give you the tools to do that. 
Uh, let's see here. I think I'm all caught up on questions at the moment. But uh, my question for you is, who came up with the uh, the title, Adventures in the Household? Because I, I love that. Uh, that everybody, uh, they, everybody, everybody came up, with, it's, it's everybody came up on that, Adventures in the Household. It was I a group. The first or the second yeah. call, we just came out, me, Rico, and Jacob with the same title. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was kind of spontaneous. Nice, I love it. I love it. It fits. Was it there? I don't well. know. It was obvious because it was the same idea the three of us had at the same time. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. You, that's when you you probably just realize that it's it's meant this 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 group was meant to be. Yes. You know, when when you work on a title, there's always some uncertainty. You know, it's a very important uh, step in for a project. So when we spoke with J speak with Jacob and Jacob was like, my idea was to call these adventures in the household. We say, okay, that, that's the right title because it, it was in the air, uh, apparently, you know, because um, so, so yes, it's kind of a little bit of household magic uh, in, in the works. Sure, absolutely. Now, one thing that I love about uh, this product line and, and the, the original uh, household product line is, of course, the art. And uh, let's give a shout out to Danielle. She's uh, an amazing artist. Um, is Are there any new art? Is there any new art for this product line that is not in the, uh, in the, old, in the original line? There's just the three covers, the three new okay. covers of the book. Uh, and... Um, mainly because uh, I think people would have uh, uh, kind of looked for us uh, and uh, killed us uh, if we added any more art that was not in the original books. So we try to keep Daniela at, at bay. She did three amazing covers. I think that I, I really thought we were going to struggle to have better looking uh, covers for household because I was in love with the household covers and, and they were extremely suffered covers because I think we have spoken about this in the past, but um, household never had a cover. The Italian edition of household was just like this. So um, uh, I, okay. I didn't like the idea of having um, you know, an illustration on the cover. Uh, when we worked with uh, back with Simon, uh, Simon was very strict about they uh, they were um, you know strict about having something you know drawn on the cover so people would understand what you were selling, which of course made sense. Uh, and so we had to 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 convince us we had to do this. So basically, me and Simone was like, okay, we are going to do covers, but we will we will cover them inside. The box. You know, so, so that we are all happy. And then we decided to do this cover and they were extremely, you know, suffered from us and Daniela because they had to represent the whole of the household and that so many stories, so many uh, things going on and you want to convey everything. So obviously we were concerned to do three more cover and Daniela did such an, an amazing job. I think the core book cover is just my favorite and it's uh, extremely spot on, you know, of the because you have to convey they, they are small, but there's also the Regency era, this kind of Napoleonic setting. Uh, and the house uh, that you are inside, the right. house which is abandoned, so there are no human, uh, you are not playing, you know, uh, 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 little folk hiding from humans, but they are living out in the open, but inside the house, there's a lot of information <laughs> that you must convey in a single um, art. So yes, sure. it was. Very hard, but the res the final result of these three new uh, cover art are, are, are really amazing. Very cool. Uh, MQB92 asks, what do you think was the most quote unquote satisfying translation between the two systems? Some Eureka moment, like it would work really, really, really well if I do it like that. For me, it was something Jacob did with the, sorry, so with the, um, downtime scene because while Jacob was doing the downtime scenes uh, for um, Adventures in the Household, we were working and we are working at Household Volume 2 uh, 
which will feature, you know, the, the garden. So we have this kind of camping mechanic. So we were working on something similar. Uh, and there's always, you know, in a game like household, there's something that are important, like uh, cooking, caring for others, playing music. And these are something that you really struggle, you know, to put inside a mechanic, you know, inside uh, the, the roots, because basically you are cooking, you are playing music for some people. Uh, and Jacob came up with this for the downtime scene that um, we have these special resources in household, which are called the ACEs, usually are awarded an ACE. They work kind of like the inspiration in, in D&D, and you are awarded an ACE for doing something specific, something cool in specific uh, fields. And uh, Jacob has the, this idea, for example, the ACE of clubs, which will give you an advantage in all the strength and constitution-based roles. You usually get this in household when you do something physically, you know, incredible. You kill some some huge beast or something. And for example, in the Jacob conversion, it was something that you can award to other player if you cook a good meal for them. So in the downtime scene, you can spend your action to cook an homemade meal. And if you do a good job and people uh, appreciate what you have made for them, they will feel stronger and that's uh, uh, turned up as a, an ace of clubs that you can later spend, uh, you know, so kind of an edge that you can gain during. And I think that was extremely clever and was a way to use original mechanic in a new way that we never thought about. And I, I'm going definitely to steal this for volume two. All right. Well, very cool. How about you, Jacob? Was there anything that uh, that you were like that, that really kind of was like a most satisfying like translation that was like you were like, oh, this is this is what. Um, I will say that I had a lot of fun doing the terrible, terrible things. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's always nice to write up something where you can be mean to the players. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, again, that was good. And just working through, like Rico was saying, the, the scenes, especially the downtime scenes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things that we did with Adventures in the Household is we have trades. You have tools, right. you know, which is a very standard 5e thing, but you also have trades. You know, so we can have a character that's good at cooking. It doesn't mean like, you know, like in the regular D&D, that would be the cook's utensils. But now we can just be somebody that's good at cooking, uh, and then so I wanted to make sure that each of the down each of the different trades have something to do during, during downtime that will do something nice for them. And like we said, that was a really fun process of like, okay, what can you do with this trade that's going to be beneficial? And you know, earning an ace was really really a very fun. Like, okay, this can tie everything together. You know, sure. you're good at this. You're going to spend time doing this, and you're going to get rewarded for it if you do a really good job. And that was, again, that was really kind of, everything clicked. Everything worked together there. Nice. Very cool. So is it my understanding that uh, going forward uh, with this, with householders in general, it, are you going to be putting out two product lines at the same time whenever you do crowdfunding? Or is it, are we going to see a staggered release? Uh, I guess that's, that's probably a... a question that maybe maybe your community has is this going to be something that uh, you'll see are you going to keep jacob busy while you're developing uh the volume two as well or or is it going to be you know one development after the other for for household going forward um, i think that we still don't know this okay uh, hopefully the let's say that the the goal the, the the best case scenario will be to develop the two line almost uh, simultaneously so that we can possibly have um, a second, you know, shared release like Free League did with, uh, with the expansion of Moria, I believe, for Lord of the Rings. So that was a campaign mm -hmm. for both uh, versions of the game. And that that's the base case scenario. Of course, we this is our first 5e campaign. Up until now, uh, the campaign is being uh on par with our expectation we are extremely happy about the result of the kickstarter i guess we'll we'll see how uh well perceived would be adventures in the household and when we are going to release 
the House of Volume 2 and we'll see what, what we can do if there is, because of course we are also, uh, I should add this, that we are working always at the Italian and the English edition, uh, editions sure. of Household. So adding uh, Adventures in the Household, it means that we are, for each book, we have to make four versions. So English Household, Italian Household, English Adventures in the Household, and Italian Adventures in the Household. So it's kind of um, a, a big production project. That's that's so that's... Um, I'm not seeing Simone's face right now, but I think he's concerned about having to do Obviously, <laughs> as you probably know. One, you know. Yes, so not yeah, producing fine. like yeah. 12 books at one time, it's not very easy. A lot of things can go wrong. But of course, as a, as a goal, like Rico said, uh, if people will appreciate the work we are doing with Adventures in the Household would be to uh, take forward both uh, interaction because our goal remains the same uh, so to, to expand the people that are the no household, the playing household, enjoying its lore, its character, its story uh, as, as, as much as possible. So that's the goal. I don't know how <laughs> and if we will manage to do that, but that's for certain the the goal um now the one question that i have are we going to see adventures in the outgun I, I don't think it would it would work uh, no no i don't think i don't but, think it would either but well, but you know I, I i had to ask because you know that the, most people are going to probably there, there is a segment of your community that'll be like well now that they've got jacob <laughs> like, what else are they going to try to convert to 5e? Because you know, you've got you got this uh, you know this great ass you know the asset to, that uh, can just keep doing 5e conversions that are just amazing. So you know, I was just kind of curious that uh, you know, but maybe we'll do uh, you know 5e original at a certain point. I mean, this so uh, there, there's always a chance. I'm I have to say as always, I am. Uh, as many people, I grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons. For me, it was the third edition, 3.0, uh, but yep. to each is own, I, I, I believe. Um, so even if me and Simone, we are not, you know, uh, as Jacob knows painfully well, we are not so skilled in designing uh, uh, 5e stuff. That doesn't mean that we no, do not enjoy the game or have idea for a game that might benefit from that system also because our system is focused on you know uh, different things different yeah yeah absolutely it was, it was it was more of a joke and more of an honor more more of a, uh, <laughs> of, of a compliment to jacob that he can probably convert if anybody can convert out gun to a guy <laughs> it's, it's going to be him but so doug, I, I don't think you know doug i'll just tell you i, I have thought about it not much have you really thought about it <laughs> It's already, it's already used to being outgunned, at least, Jacob, I, I yes. believe, with, with us coming from all the direction. And by the way, I just wanted to show you this since we are on the oh. argument. Because sure. they are uh, from the, you know, from, from print and they are being delivered as we speak. And we also have, I don't know if it shows on camera. I have a, a lot of... We have a little dug yes. here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Look at that! So, that is nobody. Knows all the good that. books, I, I am overflowed with things. Yeah. So the uh, you... factories. We have a lot of different items for us. Yeah. How many items do you want? One dice, one pouches, one cards. <laughs> is, is kind I, of I, have, I cannot. <laughs> my entire floor is just factories. That's okay. That's spare parts. You, you, I will do something with them. But yeah, yes, everything of, uh, is coming together, uh, and we are really proud of the work done with uh, Afghan and what we are. A lot of dice. We, we, I love dice. Different colors. Of dice. <laughs> and so yes, yes, that's that's it. I, I don't think adventures in Afghan would be feasible because, unlike, as we told. At the beginning, Household, of course, li relies heavily on the lore and the story, while Afghan is basically its own system. 
Uh, but I, I can say for sure that working with Jacob he, is, is very fun and it's, it's very good at what he does. So uh, for sure, we'll try to to continue this this partnership in the future. Such a great, uh, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm so so excited that uh, as soon as as soon as uh, Rico said that uh, you had uh, signed uh, Jacob for, to work on this, uh, it made me very very happy. I was I was excited to kind of you know bring bring you know this team together. So, but I, I want I'd say I brought it together, but like it just I was able to it, 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 at least put a, a little bit of the help into putting it together. Let's put it that way, uh, because. Just some of my favorite people are on the screen, and so it's always nice to see people get to, get to oh, work with, with uh, my leg. Uh, let's see here. Look, even even uh, Grilots asks, uh, there, there will be Outgun Adventures, and it will be in French. Did I miss something? No. Grilots, did I miss any spoiler? Friend of us, no. There will be no Outgun Adventures. <laughs> Especially not in French, probably. Uh, since we're mentioning Outgun, what about Broken Compass? Is the new Kickstarter coming anytime soon? Do you want to address that at all, or? It's basically it's it's no secret that we don't own uh, the rights for Broken Compass anymore. Since I believe almost two years, uh, almost two years right now. So basically, we don't know if uh, Simon, who currently holds right, is doing some new addition for Broken Compass. We, on the other end, are focusing on uh, on Outgand uh, and uh, starting from you know now that uh, that Outgand is reaching you know retailers, uh, we are kind of moving forward with Outgand as our main line as the system, and we're going to expand in different you know genre and different kind of uh, of settings, and also we have Household, of course, which is our passion project, and Memento Mori. Coming up uh, shortly at GenCon, if everything goes according to plan, and I believe tomorrow we are going to release the PDFs at least for Memento Mori. Yes, yes, we can oh, say wow. that's a spoiler for Grelo. The the PDF for the core book and the Codex um, Gaigas, I think it's, it's pronounced in English, for Memento Mori are ready. So if nothing happens tomorrow, uh, we will send them to the backers. Uh, so yeah, it's proceeding. everything. It's moving forward. That's super quick. Yeah, that uh, campaign didn't end. All. It seems like I just had one month own... and uh, six yeah. six weeks ago, I think five okay. six weeks ago. That's amazing, guys. Very very uh, very awesome. Um, yeah, it's like uh, people are very excited. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned Gen Con. You'll be at Gen Con uh, yes. this, this year, I'm, I'm assuming. And Jacob, you, you will be as well? I will. Yes. And, and well. this, this time, uh, we will bring with us our amazing translator, Katarina, will be... Oh, nice. Well. Well, it'll, be, it'll be great to we'll meet Katarina finally uh, in, <laughs> in uh, person. Uh, that's great. Um, so uh, you'll, have, you'll have Outgunned, you'll have Household, and you'll have Memento Mori? Yes. And probably Adventures in the Household, if we are... We, we are trying to we are have trying. Adventures in the Household as well. Just right wow. in time for Jenka. Not be easy, but we are working. You guys <laughs> so know that Jenka is only like... I'm, I'm just checking my calendar. It's it's like no, only no. like... There's a different time zone in Italy. So we have a, a day oh. of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so oh, that's good. That's great. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited to, to see. Are the other? Are, are you going to be at any other events uh, this year? So we can let uh, folks know if they'd uh, like to interact with you in person. Besides Gen Con, is there anything uh, any, anywhere else? Yeah. Uh, at Essen Spiel in in Germany, for of course, in October, I think, and in in Luca, <laughs> in Italy, of course. Yeah. I don't know if we are able to attend any other. Uh, convention because, as you painfully know, that it's just the three of us. <laughs> Since we are we are busy writing and producing the games, lot of them, uh, it's hard for us to be more present. We are trying. We are working to to attend even more uh, convention, but we'll let everyone know as soon as we know if uh, some other spots open. 
Very nice. Very nice. Jacob, what about you? Are you going to be anywhere in the States besides the Gen Con? Um, I might be at Origins. I haven't locked that down yet. Uh, but then Gen Con um, is probably my most likely, then maybe PAX East later in the year. But, you know. Right. Very cool. Excellent. Well, uh, if anybody would like to connect with you all online, I know uh, Two Little Mice, we have a great uh, Discord channel that is very active, and uh, people can ask you questions directly on uh, on Discord. Yes. Um, is there any, any other way that uh, you would like anywhere else you'd like folks to uh, check out before uh, to uh, interact with you all? Um, our Two Little Mice Facebook page and the Facebook group uh, uh, which is called um, 2LM Adventurers Club, uh, and mainly Discord. We are always on Discord trying to, you know, answer uh, all the questions and just connecting with the uh, with all our fans and, and friends around the world. Jacob, is there any place that uh, folks can keep track of all the stuff that you're doing? You're not only just doing stuff for Two Little Mice, but you're also doing stuff for Free League. You're also doing stuff for uh, for other publishers. Is, is there anything yeah. else that any 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 place that uh, folks can kind of keep track of all the stuff that you're putting out? Yeah, the best place to go because social media is such an interesting place these days. Linktree mm -hmm. slash Jacob Rogers RPG that are linked oh. everywhere that I'm at. So nice. you know, connect with me on Threads, on Blue Sky, um, on Twitter if it still exists tomorrow. Um, are we still calling it Twitter? I think we're oh, are, are we calling yeah, it X. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think anybody calls it X, though, to be yeah, honest with the, you. The <laughs> I, I don't, don't know. know in US, in Italy, I've never heard anyone. No, the, the best things I, I've seen it's uh, X parenthesis Twitter parenthesis. So that, that's that's the best, you know. Even uh, longer uh, name, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Grayla says, oh, I did not realize that Mr. Rogers is here. Thank you for your amazing work on adapting households for the 5e. That's, no problem. Yeah. And like I said, uh, if anybody was going to do this this new version, it, it, Jacob would have been my top. If this were my product line, this was, Jacob would be my number one choice for this. And I'm so glad that, uh, that it, it happened. And I hope that... Uh, Everyone's so excited, especially 5e players, that uh, they get to play in this this setting that uh, I'm really excited about, and I really love it. And uh, yeah. I'm excited to see what uh, what Volume Two is going to look like. Do you have any kind of ECA on where when when we might see Volume Two Volume Two hit Kickstarter or crowdfunding? It's so uh, the 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 public answer is somewhere around the end of this year, the beginning of next year, but. Through this, uh, also this such a huge amount of work and time. Insane and amount of work for for really? us, for Rigo and Daniela, in, in particular, of course, because Rigo has to write. That, I mean, everything that you read in household comes from Rico's twisted mind. <laughs> uh, so, and and basically, ninety nine percent of the art, but also a huge part of, of the aesthetic. Of also comes from Daniela, and this takes time. Not just realizing it, but also imagining it and uh, working on it and polishing it. As I said, also is a big piece of our life. So whatever we we, we work on also, we want to be at top, uh, the, the the best work we can do, and this takes time. We we are not getting younger, as you know. So it, it's a bit. <laughs> At least I'm not. Rico maybe yeah. is getting. I I'm surely right. Every time uh, I do a live, I eat healthy. Uh, but <laughs> um, you know, me and Daniela, we actually argue about the uniforms of characters in household. So that 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 wow. that's kind of, of of work, uh, and it's really it's a shared word. So obviously, it takes time to be on the same, uh, uh, you know, page, and um, uh, of course, it's it's uh, yeah, it's really a lot of work. Also, these days, we are building a little detective studio for Aidan and and Shioba. So we, as you can see, oh, we wow. are we are kind of busy, you know. We cannot work at household. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is what we do in our spare time. We are building little houses for our miniatures. So, so nice. That's also part of the of the work. There you go. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's going to uh, going to do it for uh, this session. I want to thank uh, Jacob, Enrico, and Simone for coming on and, and being a part of this this stream. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, anything we talked about, go check out the Kickstarter. It's in the link. In, the link is in the description below. Uh, I'm excited to see you all at Gen Con. I can't wait to uh, give you all hugs in in person and uh, hopefully uh, uh, just see more and more people pick up. Um, all this, the the amazing products that uh, all the three of you are creating because uh, you're doing some great work in this in this industry, and I'm so excited and I'm so honored to to be able to tell you all friends and and uh, you know have have you all make some really cool stuff. So uh, I have a question, right. for Doug. Before oh, before we leave, sure. a question for you. Uh, <clears throat> this, as you said at the beginning, this is all you're doing, meaning that you put. Our tree. Uh -uh. No, no, I did not say that was all my. I said <laughs> I just made the suggestion you that, that to take responsibility for your. Oh no! Oh it's no! Your fault. But the, there is. It's, this is going pretty well. We we clicked with Jacob, and I hope that's that's he has the same feeling. But we we're doing a uh, uh, cool stuff. It's going great on Kickstarter. We can't wait to do more. So this is, of course, you are bragging about this because this went well. But my question is, do you are you always right, or there is a, or, or you just you know throw this stuff as people, and there is a bunch of uh, un, <laughs> you know of no, project, no, project, no, project that we don't know what is along the way. I, I, I will I will say that, that that people have commented that this is this is not the first collaboration that I've I've orchestrated. I've, there have been other or but like. That's one thing that, that I've been called out on a lot is that, hey, you know what Doug does really well is identifying people that are really good at certain things and aligning them with other people that are looking for those people or looking for. And and so while I, I don't know if that's entirely true, it has happened a few other times as well. And I'm just it just. I don't, and I feel like I feel like I I made the the statement that this is all my doing, and it's it's not. But but it it, it does make me feel really good to see people that I really respect and that I know are doing really great things work together to make even more cool stuff like that. There's something really special about like knowing that like knowing that, that Jacob is working on this with you guys and that you guys are doing this, like, it just, it just makes my, it makes me feel good that like you guys are, are collaborating and like Jacob gets to, to you put his skills together with some people that are putting the, their skills together and just making more cool stuff. Like that's awesome. And yeah, I've been able to do that a couple times and, and in this industry and it just, even though that like it doesn't really get announced or anything, it's like it just makes my heart feel good that like more people are making like people can use their skill sets in in more ways. And I don't know, I don't know. So, so there's, yeah, there's, it, it has there's... happened before, and 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 yeah, I don't usually like, and I feel bad that I kind of felt like it was like okay. But there is there is no graveyard of failed collaboration. <laughs> well, I mean, no, so far, so far, I don't think that there has been. It's been it's been know. a lot of Rico. If it hadn't worked out, Doug would have invited us to his house, said, here, I want you to see the basement. Come down with me. <laughs> no, we're no. never talking about this ever again. <laughs> oh, man. A bunch of game designers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, that's actually why I'm buying a new house. Is because yes. the, 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 base, the basement's full now. Yeah. The basement's full. We gotta go. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that's the kind of here here's to a growing web of Doug fueled cool things. Uh, I just love like that's the one reason why I love this industry is because cool people are making cool stuff and co connecting those people together to make cool stuff just happens to be a side perk that of this uh, of of all this, which is awesome. So I'm I'm excited that uh, we've been able to, you know make make a connection here and, and uh that it's all working out and, and y'all are making more cool stuff so all right now that the that's that's been answered 
We will officially sign out. I want to thank again Rico Simone and Jacob for coming on. Thank you to everybody that's watched all this far. If you would like, uh, please hit that like button down below if you haven't already. And uh, hit that subscribe because I love having these uh, individuals on and, and other individuals. And I'd love to uh, promote anything that uh, I think is cool and that uh, anything that uh, I think these creators are making that uh, they are doing. So, all right. <laughs> Now people <laughs> never get down into the basement. You know spiders. Yeah, yeah there are some <laughs> things down there. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next time. Remember, winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. We'll see you next time. Bye now.